Welcome, good afternoon, everyone. Good morning for our West Coast friends. Welcome to over 150 franchisors on today's IFPG educational call, possibly the most well-attended educational call we've had. You know the topic, the coronavirus. Strategies franchisors can implement right now with candidates. We're joined today by Ryan Zink, CEO and co-founder of Franchise Fastlane, and Doug Shadle, CEO and co-founder of Rhino7 Franchising. I'm your moderator and your IFPG president, Red Boswell. Also on standby for any funding-related questions are Shirley and Tara, funding consultants at FranFund. So as we discuss this critical topic, please enter your comments or your questions over on the right side of your screen. There's a chat area. We'll do our best to address as many of the uh, questions as we can during the hour we've allotted. And gang, we acknowledge the personal and professional challenges that each of us and our loved ones are experiencing during this crisis. We're not going to minimize it today. Our discussion today is based on today's data. Keep that in mind. As things continue to change and evolve, be ready to pivot, ready to alter your course of action, and, and really ready to slow down or speed up. Pretty much like you always have. I mean, that's the world we live in, right? Just, just elevate that alertness. Elevate the agility to the next level to be able to pivot quickly. Um, I saw a lot of this that we're going through together, a lot of it and more a decade ago as a franchisor during the big uh, global economic crisis that we many of us on this call experienced. And, and I think uh, I'll, you'll, you'll give me an amen if you went through that. It's times like these that are the reason Many individuals choose to become a franchisee in the first place and to join a franchise system like yours. So, Doug, I'll start with you. What advice do you have for the 150 plus franchisors and franchise development reps on today's call? Uh, thanks, Red. I, I appreciate the opportunity to talk with everybody. And uh, before I get started, it's been a heck of a week, right? It's it's one of, one of these things that we've really never seen before. I mean, at Rhino7, we're uh, a franchise sales organization and have been since 1999, but we're also franchisors. So we're dealing with franchisees, um, our staffs, different things along that line. And then also at Rhino7, we are franchisees. So we're on the, the ground level with customers and dealing with that. So we've seen really all the aspects, you know, especially over the last week. And if I, I take us all back in time about a week, it was like it was really a strange thing. A, about a week ago on Wednesday, this whole thing just seemed to explode, and it kind of exploded with sports. Um, the ACC tournament, the NCAA basketball tournament canceled, the AC or the NBA, that just kind of got everybody to focus on it, and it's kind of exploded from there. So what I'd like to do is really kind of focus here on franchise development, franchise sales to kind of begin with. And one of the things that, you know, we've really done with our team here first is to try to keep their preconceived notions out of this, right? We all react to this kind of, this kind of crisis differently. And we're all going to have ups and downs. So some of us are going to see this as a very extreme thing. Sky is falling. What are we going to do? And more panic. Others are going to see this as a blip in the screen. Doesn't really affect me too much. We'll do our thing and it'll pass. So we really tried to focus on that with our, our, especially our sales reps that are in the field every day that are working and talking with the, you know, prospects to, keep level-headed and to stay positive, but realistic. In other words, one thing that we don't want our teams doing is going over the top um, about how this is meaningless and it really doesn't have any effect. So we, we want them to be positive about the whole thing, but still obviously be very realistic. I, I think one of the things that that's easily can happen um, in a time like now is you're, everybody's pulling back, everybody's worried, everybody's doing all these things. And what we really need to do is just pivot and, and keep moving forward. So Red, what I'd like to do is maybe field some questions from you so that I, cause I could just talk continuously here or whatever you'd like me to do. 
Excellent. Well, th thank you. I sure will, Doug. Uh, folks, feel free to post your comments and questions on the right side of the screen. I'm going to uh, pivot over to Ryan Zink, and it looks like Jen Kane has stepped in for Ryan. Jen, what can you share with the, the folks today in franchising that are concerned about how can they optimize and really do the best they can in this current situation with their franchise development efforts? Yeah, thank you, Red, and, and thanks for, for bringing us in on this. You know, we are really taking a, a three-prong approach, and I, I will tell you so far, it's been very successful, you know, just with candidates and, and on behalf of the, the franchisors that we represent. I think the first thing is, when you look at our approach, I'll just start with number one, and I'll let you guide it from here, but understanding really um, with, with a side of urgency. So now more than ever, you know, it's our time to be understanding of the fear that's associated with buying a franchise. Uh, but securing funds, the fear of traveling to see a franchisor. And with that said, franchise sales have really always had an underlying tone of urgency to secure territory, funding, hurry, hurry. That's always what we do, right? Time kills deals. That's our focus. Well, really now when you look at it, it's different. So the strategies that I'll just share with you quickly that we're using on this first bullet point of just understanding the side of urgency is, you know, number one, that, you know, the federal interest rates right now are nearly 0%. Uh, I believe the president was just on talking about, you know, what they're going to offer on the SBA side for new business development. We may never see money this cheap again in our lifetime. This is huge. Um, also, uh, you know, Marco Rubio has introduced a bill that would have all loan fees uh, for for a year, waive all loan fees for a year, um, increase the government guarantee to, from 80 to 90 percent. All of these things are things we're really trying to highlight while understanding that it is still, um, you know, a very sensitive time. And then finally, we've got, we're in FDD renewal time. Um, I've been telling, you know, our team at Fastlane, during this FDD renewal time, it's almost a blessing that it's aligning with this uh, this virus and this urgency in the economy because it really will allow us to, to come out strong at the end of both. But we're also using that as, hey, you know, FDDs change year over year. Here is why it's a benefit for you, your candidate, to, to move forward during this time to sign with our FDD because we represent a lot of really strong brands that are going to continue to change that. And we've got to be sensitive. The tone can't be hey, do it, do it. It has to be, hey, we hear you. Let's talk this out and then find solutions. Strong message. Uh, Doug, any comments on, on that? Yeah, what I, I think I'll do here is I'll, I'll, I, one of the things that, that we did is we, we looked at our intro call. So we all have an intro call with a new candidate. And what we knew, knew we needed to do was pivot and change some of the wording that we said in, in, on intro calls. So one of the things that I had mentioned before, we want to stay positive but realistic, but we want to ask them, okay, you know, when we're because you're going to have to talk about the virus, right? This is crazy times with the virus, but you, you want to make sure you're asking them, do you think this virus pause will end? And by the way, I want to stress that word pause. This is a pause in the economy, right? It's a pause for us all. This does not look like it's going to be a long-term thing. It's just coming so fast that it, it can be scary. So the way we speak to a franchisee, we want to, a potential franchisee, we want to, we, we want to hit, really come right at them out of the gate soon with, do you think this virus pause will end? Okay, because who's going to say no? They're going to say, I don't know when it will, but they're going to say, yeah, it's going to end. And then that can ease you more into your sales process. When you're doing an intro call with somebody, you're really covering four things with them, right? What the business is and what it does, okay? What the owner's role is, what it costs, and what can be made according to your item 19, right? That's why they're on the call. So that, that may take 30 minutes for you to do or it may take an hour for you to do, but now you have to talk about this virus and what it's going to do. And there was very good points made on how it's going to be easier to fund 
and do all those things and 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 and, and make this uh, a blip on the screen. But it, in our sales system, we're really worried about how do we keep a good pipeline? How do we not just kill the pipeline off when there's a lot of anxiety out there? So when you're when you're a salesperson or your sales team is out there, they can quickly gauge with the prospect who they are. Are they somebody that's very feel, fearful and the consultant's done a good job in getting them to pick up the phone and have a conversation with you? Or are they somebody that thinks this is a blip and, and this is a slight pause and they'll move forward? So we've created two different types of paths, so to speak, for those candidates. The ones that are very fearful are very methodical, right? Very methodical, nice and easy. What we're really trying to do is we get back with the consultant, talk with the consultant about this person, and are we trying to keep them engaged until this subsides? Others are going to want to take advantage of it. They're, want to get, they're going to want to get in. They're going to want to go through a normal investigation process. So one of the biggest things we've really tried to do with our teams is don't make everybody the same. It's never always the same in normal conditions, right? Let alone right now. Okay, so, and I think Jen mentioned this, this is a good time to be investigating. If I'm a methodical, and I need a methodical right now because I'm pretty scared, let's say if I'm a candidate, then we want to take them through the process and say, this is a good time for you to investigate why you've got a little downtime. We'll go nice and methodical through this. And then when this subsides, you'll be in a good position to take advantage of it and know what you want to do. Okay. I want to go back one more time. I'm going to say it more today. The word paused is very helpful. Very helpful. Love that word. Strong nugget too for the first call. Just little tweaks in our verbiage can make such a huge difference. Uh, Jen, do y'all have anything really specific for your first conversation with candidates that you've tweaked with this uh, during this strange time we're living in? Yeah, absolutely. So I think you know we've we've seen a, an influx across all of our brands. We've seen you know different responses, and I couldn't agree more with Doug that we have put. We, we've actually found about three buckets of candidates. We've got the hey, let's move forward, the, you know, march on, uh, time to build wealth, and then the majority is hey, we've got our toe dipped in the water. We're a little nervous. You know, let's see what you have to say, and then just the real fear-based candidates. And what we've been able to do and really drive home in that introductory phase, and what first we're noticing this, people have a little more time on their hands pretty consistently right now. So we're actually not seeing as big of a decline as we imagined we would this week. That's great news. Number two, um, what we're doing is we're listening first. Um, we're, we're hearing their story. We're asking them, hey, you know, how are you? You know, just we try to brighten their day. We stay very optimistic, but we're giving them the candidate the floor in a different type of way, not just, hey, I'm excited to learn about your past, but more so, how are you feeling right now in the present? And we're really engaging with them and listening to all of their objections and fears about, you know, the economy. Is this the right time? And we're being extremely patient and considerate and then leading them into the opportunity and what that means for them in the near future and in the extended um, times ahead. Interesting. And then after that first call, and Doug, I may have interrupted you while you were still on the first call topic. How do you proceed from there? Well, you're, and, and Jen mentioned uh, uh, some good points there. You're, you know, I, I like the three different prospects, but, but and I, I want to agree with her, we have not seen this, I'm running uh, across a majority of our prospects right now. Our worst ones seem to be, can we reschedule for next week while I get my feet underneath of me? Okay, that's, that's the worst that we have seen. The rest- The delay. Kind of, the, it's just a delay. We haven't had hardly any that have just said, listen, I'm, I'm out. This is too much for me. Of course, this is early, but this is usually when it's probably about the worst this week. So mm -hmm. that's all real good news for us. 
and what we're we're really focusing on it at the end of our uh, of our investigate our intro calls is uh, a path. In other words, this is the path. This is how it's going to be, even more so than we normally do. That hey, we're going to go through it at this pace. This is what we're going to do. This is what we're going to cover, and this is going to bring you out on the other end in about this timeline, depending on the candidate. So it sets them at ease with that, and then. Obviously, we've changed a lot of things. Fortunately, at Rhino 7, we already did virtual discovery day. Okay, so we only had to tweak that a little bit. So when we're going through how the path is going to work for them to a decision, we're able to ease that in. And I think we'll probably talk more about virtual discovery day here in a bit. Interesting. Jen, how about you? After that first call, uh, where does it go from there in this new world? Yeah, you know, I, I'll be honest with the, the introduction calls that we posted beginning really on Thursday when I feel like everything started to escalate. Uh, we've been following the same uh, program that we've always had in place where we get them through that introduction and we move them into that phase of unit economics. We explain the timeline, but to Doug's point, we are definitely saying, hey, this is your process. This is how we outline it, but this is your process. What we have found in our unit economics webinars, and, and we host those a lot of times, um, some brands individually, some brands in group settings, depending on how many candidates we have in the process. And we've had really great turnout this week. So that is also a very, very pleasant and surprising news that we haven't skipped a beat on that second phase. So in regards to the, the language there, we haven't had to adjust too much. I think, you know, the biggest thing that's coming up as we move them from phase one to phase two is, yeah, but what does that mean now? What is what is happening to your current locations? And that, that creates a whole nother conversation topic. All right, so let me pause on the, uh, uh, as we move forward here. I really feel like we need to jump back for a sec. We've been talking first call, we've been talking transitioning through the process, setting the proper expectations. But there's a lot of folks on this call who really are interested in what are you doing and what maybe have you done in the past to get the lead in the first place during a trying time like this, a, a time full of fear in a lot of people's worlds. What are we doing to actually get that lead and show that lead even before the first call some confidence and some, uh, some comfort? I'll start out as you guys think about this. So I was a franchisor, founded a franchise organization back in 0405 timeframe. And in eight, nine, and 10, we had been cranking at three new franchises a month for three and a half years. And somebody turned off the spigot around April of 08. And, I, and so here are the five things I did, FranDev related. First of all, and I think we all know this one is a no-brainer, Focus on your current Z's. Now we're, we got a lot of friend dev folks on the call here, so they individually aren't on the op side, but it's the right thing to do, obviously. And if, and validations matter. You're not going to sell any franchises without great validations, and to get great validations, you got to take care of your current franchisees, especially in a trying time like this. So doing what's right for the franchisees, number one. Number two, I took advantage of fire sale deals for friend dev marketing. Let's be real. I, I mean, a lot of us kind of maybe uh, are tweaking our friend dev efforts considerably, and I was looking for the deals. So that's nothing new in our world, but I took an elevated approach to that and really went out looking. Things like you know, Google AdWords, for instance, the pricing on that is going down when the economy struggles. All right, number three, limited time. I stress limited time, but yes, I lowered my initial franchise fee. Now I was very PR minded, and when I did that, I hit I hit press like crazy, and I got a great I got included in a a great article in the New York Times about what franchises franchisors are doing to help bring on new franchisees. And I we even had the phrase, "You can buy a franchise with a credit card." Our franchise fee I, I dropped from and this is 50, you know this is uh, 2009, so 11 years ago, dropped it from 25. Uh, and that was too low at the time, but it was it was low, 25, dropped it down to 99.99. That's just an idea. Another one was for the right candidates, I even offered some in-house financing or deferred 
franchise fees. These are extreme things to do, guys. I'm not suggesting you do it. I'm just sharing what I did. None of them were silver bullets and none of them got me 100 sales, but each one had an impact. Lastly, I talked to my current Zs. I had a lot of great Zs that have been doing really well. Sure, they were scared. Sure, they were pulling back on some of their efforts, but I talked to them. I helped them. I coached them through taking advantage of the fire sales, and I even, when appropriate, I had conversations with some about expanding and adding additional territories, again, with possible in-house financing or deferred franchise fees or lowered fees. So just anything I could do to get aggressive and help my current franchisees to succeed and maybe even expand, I, I went after. Doug, how about you? Well, I'm going to go back to the question that you have for us. What what do we deliver to the lead? So when, when we get a, a lead, let's say organic or from a consultant, we use what we call educational portals. Uh, these are websites that have a huge introductory section that has videos and details, but basically they could spend about 45 minutes on it uh, learning about the brand before we have an intro call. It works really well with organic leads because it helps them uh, you know, engage with us. But with a consultant lead, it gives us something to have them better prepared for our initial full conversation. So the other thing that's good with uh, educational portals is we can make changes instantly to the information that we are dishing out to prospects, right? So we've been tweaking our portals all week to deliver what we want and to, to have it out there. And it's simple, easy to do. Our portals break down not only an introductory section, but how real estate works, staffing, training, technology, marketing, all these different categories that help march them through the investigation process. But if I back up even further, hey, Red, and talk hey, about- Doug, before we back up, Help us understand. What give us some examples of educational portals that you, you you use? Well, an educational portal for us is a website. Okay, and, and it's a website that is only for people that are engaged in our uh, sales cycle. And this is a website right? that you've created, or you're That's subscribing correct. to? That's correct. Okay. Nope. We create them, build them, put them into place, and then we have two different types of portals. We have organic lead portals, which is everything but a consultant lead, and then we have consultant portals, All right? So whatever, wherever that lead came from, the, the, it goes into the system. We have obviously staff up front that as soon as that lead comes in, it's processed and out goes an email from, we call them development managers, which are the sales managers, and, and pushes them to engage in the introductory section of that, of the educational portal, mm. okay? so. What that does is it, it, it makes it so that we're not trying to send them files and different things along that lines. It's just a little more modern. But I think for everybody on this call, what it does is it gives you quick ability to make changes. And Red, you mentioned something about five minutes ago. This is always changing all the time, right? That's what franchising is. Franchise sales change, operational systems to, to help franchisees changes all the time. And this helps keep you current all the time with it. And so it's been very helpful for us this week. Hmm. Nice. Jen, what about you? Any thoughts on, on the front end of the, the funnel? Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, really, I think the some of the key things that you brought up, Red, when you were talking about, you know, make, making sure that, that we're, we're over communicating what it is we're going to do is so important during this time. I think uh, silence is absolutely deadly at this moment uh, in the eyes of candidates and, and future prospects and really driving those leads. So, you know, the first thing we're doing, and we're much heavier on, you know, the consultant-based leads, is communicating, um, over-communicating what each brand is going to be doing. We're putting a lot of material out there to make sure that the resources are available because every lead that we are given, especially from a consultant, is extremely important, right? We don't take any of those for granted. So what we are doing is we're going to over communicate. We have a lot coming out from, you know, Carrie and Ryan, they're in the midst of that right now, putting everything together that we're doing brand by brand. But we also have updated language 
videos. Um, we are very heavy in um, with texting, you know, potential leads if they're in our pipeline to convert, and then also initial leads to keep them hanging on. Uh, videos, we're very video heavy with our messages now. Uh, we're at the point where people don't want to read a lot of text all the time, but you know, a 20 second message goes a really, really long way. So definitely agree on, you know, the digital presence, um, keeping, you know, candidates engaged that we're, you know, maybe waiting on that initial call follow up. Do we want to get in? We're texting, we're emailing, and we're really just engaging with them on a very, very consistent basis. Nice. All right. So I'll, I'll, I'll remind folks, if you do have questions, comments, feel free to post them in the chat area over on the side. Um, before I go back to Doug, I'll share a quick bit of positive news. <laughs> you know, you see so much negative out there. Let me give you some some positive things that have run across here. Number one, China appears to have turned the corner. Life has begun returning to normal where uh, COVID actually began. Next, each day uh, this week, I've heard from Zors and from consultants who have closed deals this week. Also, each day this week, new franchisors have actually contacted us and joined IFPG. That's uh, all encouraging. Um, you, many of you know our sister company, Career Transition Leads. They, they have reported an uptick in lead flow. Another encouragement to me anyway. Uh, some hot industries and sectors that are uh, obviously really benefiting during this crisis, cleaning, delivery related, healthcare related, and even the broader market, which is practically half of the franchise industry, any of the job replacement related opportunities, the sub $500,000 investment opportunities um, will benefit as the job market changes. And lastly, on the positive side uh, to share, the IFA is the developing ongoing webinar, webinar series you can learn a whole lot uh, from it. And over at franchise.org forward slash coronavirus, you can see a lot of the resources available and what the IFA is doing to support us and to help our industry. Doug, back to you, my friend. What else can you share with the, the, uh, the 100 plus folks on the call today to help imp implement new strategies and improve strategies with their candidates? Well, I, I wanna step back just a little bit and then I think I'll, I'd like to jump into virtual discovery day and how to manage that and, and, and set the expectations on it but one of the things that I would not do right now is pull back from the consultant that works right would not I would aggressively stay in them if my franchise sales development managers see a shrinking pipeline then that's more time for them to call consultants have one-on-ones and give them a 15 minutes on why their brand is strong and why they should they should pitch it. You know that should be a never-ending process with a franchise sales development manager. Even when the pipeline's full, they need to cultivate the next pipeline. So if you if you're not doing that, you definitely need to be doing it. There's a lot of consultants out there. They probably got a little bit of time on their hands potentially. So now would be a very good time to, to, to not only do it, but pr to create good habits with your franchise sales team. So that kind of leads me into virtual discovery day. And I, I'd mentioned before that we, we've always had a virtual discovery day option. So I want to explain that. So typically we're discovery day because we have a lot of brick and mortar. We have, you know, service related brands that, you know, it's good to touch and feel at discovery day. But we typically have set discovery days so that we're not pulling the team off constantly when we're when we're trying to have them. So if we have a can, we've had a candidate in the past that couldn't make a discovery day that was towards the end of the sales process, we would pull in virtual. Okay, so and virtual needs to be interactive, right? So you want to FaceTime. You definitely need to be pulling a webinar. Sometimes virtual discovery days cannot ca have the same kind of impact, or, or obviously, as a, a regular discovery day, especially if you're demoing equipment and that's a big part of what you do. Now you have to shift to how operationally strong you are, the support systems you have. Get your people that support franchisees to 
get on these webinars and, and do a presentation on it. Our typical virtual discovery day lasts three hours, maybe four. We always have done them and we always will continue to do them with individuals. One thing that I will make a note, and this is more for the operations people on there, what we have found is that we actually get to know the candidate better when we do virtual. Sounds weird because we're not seeing them, we're not shaking their hand, but we really can dive deep into them and really get to know them with the interaction that we're doing. So a virtual discovery day can be set up rapidly. Your ops team may like them because it's not pulling them out nearly as long, but this is a team effort, right? So sometimes sales and operations are oil and water. Right now, we got to get rid of that, right? We need to be a team and help them do everything that we need to do. And Red mentioned something a little bit ago, validation, right? So if I have somebody that's in the point of wanting to validate right now, I just can't turn them loose on my franchisees. That would be crazy, right? I can't do that right now when it's hitting the fan. So our, you got to manage that really well. You've got to reach out to some of your best franchisees that you know keep their head high and strong all the time and more guide that. You just can't turn that loose, right? So we, we've got a saying. Do not validate the franchisee, validate the franchisor, right? That's what you want your candidates doing. Not getting on the phone with somebody that had a really rough morning and that's all they can focus on, even though they make $250,000 net per year. It happens. Don't make, don't turn your franchisees into franchise salespeople for you and lean on that, okay? That's very difficult to do in emerging brands. You can do that a little bit more with some more mature brands, but you really don't want to go that direction unless you can help it. So before I jump into virtual, I'll, I'll stop here for a second, Red, and see if there's anything else anybody wanted to ask. No questions on that at the moment. Uh, Jen, any, any comments? Uh, no, I think, I mean, I, I agree with a lot of what was just said in regards to the brand. H having a strong franchise system is definitely key during these, you know, tough uh, economic times. And let's be honest, what everybody's looking for in this sea of uncertainty is certainty and answers. So I really think focusing on, hey, here is what we offer. Here's what we can do. I have a franchisor that put together a letter this morning. Um, I, I asked him to do this, and he put a letter together that we can send out to all of our current candidates in our pipeline, especially those we came off of Discovery Day for a brand with, you know, over 20 candidates that they, it ended last week, and they want to move forward, and look what happened. So what, what I think is so important is that you have a franchisor that is communicating and over-communicating with their franch, current franchise system each franchisee, and then also what is coming from the franchisor to those candidates. Uh, you know, being an, an outsourced development team, we have to be really, really conscious of that, and we can't be tone deaf and think they just want to hear from us. So great, we've got great letters and videos coming out from our founders to reassure their current franchisees and also the candidates in the pipeline. And I think one of the best driving factors of that is, hey, what does it mean right now? What are we seeing? Where can we lay our confidence? Whether it's, um, is there confidence in the production? Uh, yes, nothing has changed. Great, they wanna hear that. Is there confidence in the story that can be told and why this brand, just like you said, Red, you know, there's industries that are really gonna benefit right now. We've gotta tell those stories and we've gotta give them that hope. And I just wanna piggyback off one other thing you said, Red, about, you know, deals being done. The first thing I did this morning was I was, able to close a deal with ISPG and it was exciting. It was a great way to start the day. And there are people out there that are still excited. And I really want everyone on the line to know that, that, you know, the candidates that are, are sitting there in limbo, um, make sure you're working with, you know, uh, development teams and development individuals that are fighting hard to over communicate and, and ease the fears of your candidates. Uh, congrats. Thank you, Jen. I appreciate that. And, you know, and something yeah. just, I was just reminded of in that validation topic was 
as a franchisor back in the day, I was also a, a franchisee of our system. And I looked around and I realized, you know, there's a lot of scared folks out there and I'm stronger than my competitors. We all feel that way, right? And I bet you my competitors are freaking out five times harder than I am. And so not only did I do this, but I taught my franchisees to do this, which helped validations in the sales process. I said, call up your, your, your if you've done what we've told you, you've already made friends with your competition. Call them up, see how they're doing. And in a soft but serious tone, see if they're open to an acquisition. And man, the franchisees love that idea. It succeeded a bunch. And the candidates I had in process who went into the validation stage during that trying economic time, they heard from my franchisees that they had just acquired competitors. That was just awesome validation to hear that, wow, while everybody else is contracting, the, the franchisees of this brand are actually buying their competition and, and doubling and tripling in size. How cool is that? Doug, what about you? I, I would agree. I mean, you're, I, I think right now would be, we call them state of the ZOR calls with the founders or upper management. I think now is the good time for one of those, right? Most brands have had a week to react and to get, get things in place to help existing franchisees and, and, and just calm the waters a little bit. So, you know, next week with a, a let's call it like a state of the union, but it's called state of the franchise or get your founders on there, get your upper management on there. Who's ever a really good speaker that can talk about what you did, what you're doing, how you're managing this so that they can just see, Hey, this, I'm not going to be alone if something this horrible happens. And I think that it's very good timing for that, to say the least. Yes. A, another topic, I'm a little ADHD, so I'll bring this one up here. I don't know if it flows right, but I'll bring it up. So I've been asking these Zors, because I'm here in the office, I'm getting calls from, from, from franchisors. These are not, this isn't us or my team calling franchisors, prospecting, trying to get them to sign up. We've been respectful of that. And yet we've been getting calls from franchisors. So I don't, I'm don't, not shy. I've asked them, what, what made you call us? Why are you interested in joining IFPG at, at this juncture? You know, there's a, a lot of folks out there uh, quite fearful. What made you choose to do this? And each of the three that I've asked that in the last three days have said, they have cut back on other areas, but they're going for what's the lowest risk. Now I'm sharing this guys with you, not because I'm selling you, you guys are all already members of IFPG, but I was just encouraged to hear that the, the, these franchisors were coming on board with us because they were wanting to minimize their risk and yet still sell franchises, still award franchises. So that was cool to see as well. Um, Doug, back to you. Well, one, one thing I'd like to do, and I think Sherry Sieber might be on the call now, it might be nice for us to get what Fran Fund is hearing about out there and where they think things might be going and what's going on. Would that be possible, Red? Absolutely. Sherry? Great idea. Sherry was having a little bit of problems with her audio, but uh, let's see if Sherry or maybe Tara or Shirley is able to speak up. Kelly, can you take them off of mute for us? Guys, interrupt me if you're able to get on. I know uh, we hit a big maximum. We've got so many folks on this call. It was a little bit overwhelming, I think, for uh, freeconferencecall.com. Oh, did I hear someone? Hey, it's Amy. So Sherry is unmuted. Um, I'm not sure what's going on. She's using her computer speakers, too. So I don't think there should be an audio pin with the computer. Got it. Well, interrupt me if you do uh, are able to jump on there. Anyone from Fan Fund? So back on this on that same topic of funding, Jen, you guys work with a lot of funding agencies as well. Uh, we know that the Fed has cut interest rate yet again for the lowest ever. What uh, have you seen any uh, any more information regarding funding opportunities or any tweaks in the market? 
Yeah, absolutely. So I'll, I'll tell you right now, I think the biggest pause is on any sort of rollover, right? People are watching the stock market and they're seeing, you know, a, a decline and, it, and it's not ideal for them to pull out at this time. What has happened over the last three, four days is we're seeing a big shift in, hey, I was going to go this rollover route, but you know what? Now I'm thinking there are some major benefits to going on this full SBA side. So, you know, just, and, and I know, Red, this is a little bit, you know, probably jumping ahead, but on the closing side of, of candidates, you know, I'm actively working with just under 30 candidates to get them across that finish line right now. And I'll, I'll tell you, making some of those concessions where it's, hey, you know what, we'll, we'll allow you some more time to figure out, you know, if it's a multiple territory purchase, where we're, all of our franchisors are adding concessions on timeline. And also to give them the time to sort this out, meaning, hey, if you're going to do a cash infusion, do it as buying one, you know, territory now, and then let's fund the rest as your SBA loan is or your HELOC or your whatever route you're going to go now is going to happen. Because I will say the, the hardest hit candidates right now are the ones that were on a full march ahead on their rollover. And I'm sure Sherry's going to say the same thing. That's really where the struggle is, is how to give them that confidence to pull anything out of the rollovers at this time. So big push towards the SBA side. Nice. Um, I see Sherry's unmuted and Tara and Shirley are on the call. Any uh, Anybody on the funding side able to share any more? She says she's trying. <laughs> All right, here's another one that came up to me. Uh, as I was uh, speaking with cons uh, franchise buyers a decade back, and again, the econo economy and the fears were, were pretty similar. Um, I was in a service business. Now, half the folks on this call are in, ser in a service-related field. A lot of folks viewed my service as a luxury service, so they were really um, extra jittery about uh, joining a luxury service business when the global economy is was the worst it had been in nearly a, a century. What just happened there? Okay, so okay, I, I shifted the perception. Rick, hey, Shirley, just one second. This this is Sherry. Go ahead. I just want to let you know I'm I'm available. Awesome. Thank you. My message to them was, guys. A lot of folks have had to ha go back to work, two income families. A lot of the spouses that were home, per perhaps with the kids or only one spouse worked, have had to go back and get a second job and have less time. Maybe some of them have both gotten second jobs. And so in the services sector, it's actually benefiting my franchisees and could benefit you, Mr. or Mrs. Candidate, because yes, it, it's tight out there economically sometimes, but when it gets tight, Folks get busier, they work later hours, they get a second job, maybe the spouse gets a job or a second job, and therefore they have a higher need for services like ours. So that was a message that uh, worked well and of course was true for a whole lot of our clients. Sherry, what you got to share with us on how to help the candidates through this process from a funding perspective? Well, first of all, maximum of 6% rates from the SBA is unprecedented for quite some time. I think you'll all agree. So that's great news. And our messaging that we've been receiving from lenders this week is essentially it's business as usual. Um, I do wanna make the point that, uh, well, two things. One, um, President Trump is pushing a bill submitted by Marco Rubio to dec or increase the SBA guarantee from 75% to 90%, which is awesome. Um, and the second part of that is uh, to encourage lenders to um, work with new businesses. Now, that's one part of the deal. What you've been hearing about all over the news is the SBA uh, relief fund. And I, I hope everybody already knows this, but just to make sure that is for existing businesses to get relief. It's, it's a really great situation or proposal. It's a 30-year term with very favorable rates. The only thing, the other thing you guys need to know is that has to be distributed through the SBA. Um, they are trying to work out exactly how 
to get money out the door. That's more money than they've ever had to work with in terms of disaster or, or relief in the business. So they're working out the avenues and they expect to have that done. Latest I heard was this Friday, but it'll be an application type situation through the SBA. Um, the reason I mentioned that on this call where we're talking about how to get candidates moving forward is back to the validation point that Doug and Jen made. Um, you, you want your validation to stay strong by making sure that your existing franchisees are staying strong and not panicking. Um, but absolutely right that uh, people are, the only thing we're getting the uh, slow play on with folks we're talking with is hey, I want to wait and see if my 401k recovers a bit here before I move forward. Um, we're trying to combat that by it, telling them that, you know, hey, we, we think there's going to be, there's, there's indications that there will be a rebound. Let us get the foundation set up for you. Let us get your, your corporation set up and let's get you in, a, in our safety net program where when there is an uptick, you can just hit the, the button and we'll reduce the time of getting that rollover done. Um, on the lending side, again, our lenders were telling us that, yeah, they're being encouraged by President Trump to get money out the door for new loans. And we've got a set of bankers ready to see those loans from us. And we've still, we've been closing deals this week. So good, good positive uh, position. Nice. Thank you for that, Sherry. I appreciate it. Thanks for being on this call and, and, and fielding any questions that come in. Guys, you can ask those questions over on the chat box on the right side of the page. Doug Shadel, Reno7, help us understand we've got about 13, 12 to 13 minutes left. Other tactics and strategies we can take to help these candidates get through the process during this trying time. Well, one thing I, I want to say is that is really a good idea, Sherry, to get that individual that knows they want to do it, but they're fearful of a rollover, get everything done so they're in a position to jump when it's good. I, I really like that. I took some notes on that. So, you know, get you, you know you want to do something here. You're at that point. You just want to have some more money available on that rollover. Let, let's get everything in place. So thanks for, Sherry, uh, for sharing that, Sherry. That's, that's fantastic. Uh, to kind of recap here, because I know we got, you know, 10 minutes or so left here, and maybe we'll have some questions. I, I want to kind of go back and, you know, use the right words. Use the word paused economy. Use stuff like that that doesn't, doesn't sound like it's, uh, it's catastrophic. Stay positive, especially make sure your, your franchise salespeople are staying positive and realistic. I know we're really not talking about operations today, but the operational teams that are out there dealing with franchisee, that's critical for them. Get your virtual support systems in place because this is going to save you money later if you're a franchisor and supporting franchisees. And obviously look for any way that you can realistically cut costs without hurting your franchisees, right? So if this goes on for a while, Royalties may be lower, different things along that line. You got to be looking for ways to cut costs and do what you need to do to keep moving so that you're still standing and in a good position in 90 days. I'd also say to organize your key, key employees and slightly retask them and try to move them into a position that they can help more people faster. You know, we've tried to do a lot of that, especially on the operational end. Um, our support teams that are helping our franchise sales teams. Um, I've really geared up to try to help them with everything they can in enhancing what we do, and that makes a big difference. Um, you know, so the other last thing I really want to cover is stay focused on the consultants right now. You don't want the consultants forgetting about your brand. If, if you're a brand that already is getting a good lead flow from the consultant world, don't sit on it, right? I can tell you from experience, brands ebb and flow in the consultant world. Nobody ever stays on top forever. You're really looking to be steady and keep your lead flow coming in year after year after year after year. And now's the time to set those patterns 
and get your salespeople doing that. And lastly, I guess, I want to mention something I didn't mention earlier on that virtual discovery day. Make sure you're getting that set up properly, but do not go into a virtual discovery day never having done one without practicing it, right? You've got to do a dry run. you got to make sure it comes off without a hitch. you got to make sure, like Sherry was trying to get on the call or on the webinar today so that she could speak. You can't have that problem happen. you got to be prepared, okay? So thanks, Red. Absolutely, Doug. Thank you. And Jen, uh, I know we're running. We've got a good eight minutes. I've got some some closing comments, but love to get some more insights from you and from the franchise Fastlane team. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I agree very much with what what Doug said. And Sherry, I always love hearing your expertise in this. Uh, we we really lean heavily on you. So thank you so much for all you're doing right now uh, for for all of our brands. Um, yeah, what I would like to just wrap it up with is. Hey, we do, we have to be upbeat, but we have to be sensitive. Uh, we have to understand what is happening, um, but also still have somewhat of a side of urgency. Uh, be prepared and take advantage of this opportunity. Uh, virtual discovery day is absolutely critical. Um, if I'm a consultant, I would be very leery to send candidates to anyone who is not hosting virtual discovery days, um, especially during this time. You know, leads have always been valuable, but for the next few months, they're worth their weight in gold, right? They're always valuable, but right now it's any interest that someone is showing, we have to go above and beyond extraordinary measures to really show them what our brands have to offer. And you know, send, send in leads and, and candidates to brands that you trust and confirm that the brands you trust are investing in development. They're not reducing resources at this time. They're having professional discovery days. They're keeping it light. They're keeping it exciting on these virtual discovery days. We have a whole action plan on these that is so fun. Uh, we're just finding ways to make it fun, right? Everything is so heavy right now. How can we make this the most enjoyable, surprising thing possible? And then um, also just make sure, yeah, we have the appropriate amount of understanding, just a lot of listening, um, a lot of coaching, um, I think, from the development side. We're going to be actively coaching candidates along with consultants in, in ways that are a little bit new because we are a confident ear. We are, you know, a helping hand to getting them through this time of fear. So upbeat, that's my, that's what I'm going to leave you with. Just keep it positive. Excellent, Jen. Thank you. Appreciate it. Sherry, any uh, other thoughts from the funding side of this uh, wonderful world we're in? I think I got Sherry on mute. Okay, you there? Yes, Yeah, no, I'm here. Okay, well, um, I would encourage people, again, to realize that I love Doug's suggestion of using the word pause. I don't think anybody is, would say that this is not going to be handled. There's already signs happening. If you, if you watch Fox News all day, you might not believe it, but there are some very positive signs out there that the, the uh, Trump and his team are making an effort. And so there's no way you can't address that elephant on the call with your candidates, and we, we can't either. But we can talk about um, preparing. You know, get, if, it's, if it's lending, um, let's get that loan package together. Let's start pulling, you know, it's Pulling together the, the stuff for a loan package is daunting for some people. But if they know that, hey, owning a business is what I want to do and I want to be prepared, let's have them start pulling those things together. We're trying to be positive, and you guys that work with us all know that we validate your brand every time we talk to your candidate. And we, if there's a consultant, involved we validate that consultant's brilliance in introducing your brand so we are part of the team um we're we're the you know a leg of the stool that makes the whole thing work and uh we're going to obviously do everything we can to make sure we can all get deals done absolutely sherry thank you guys keep in mind every one of us is in the same boat right now but this is not a new normal uh, this crisis will end and the pent-up demand will be a welcome blessing to us all. Whether it's two weeks, four weeks, six or eight, it will transition and it will get back 
to life as usual. This new territory we're going through, we're going through it together, is extremely dynamic and therefore I encourage each of the leaders on this call to make proactive decisions that are grounded in number one, care for your team members, care for your customers, your franchisees, your supplier partners, keep it based in honesty as I'm sure you always do, keep it based in transparency, being real, and it, it'll uh, combining that with strength, combining that with courage. Let's keep moving forward posi positively together. Thanks so much for being on today's IFPG educational call.